Welcome back to React Native Radio Podcast. Brought to you by Unfunny Bunny, half the price of Unpleasant Pheasant. Episode 215, React Native iOS Native Components. So I, I had this dream last night and I actually don't get dreams very often, not vivid ones that I remember anyway. Uh, but I had this dream last night where uh, I looked outside on our back patio and there was like a giant, like a very large mountain lion back there. And we do have mountain lions around, you know, so it was somewhat realistic and it had our cat in its mouth. You know, this hmm. is like, and, and I was like freaking out and I somehow scared it away. I don't think I opened the door. I was a little too scared of the thing because it was huge. and. Uh, it, it ran off and I left the cat. So I grabbed the cat, brought it inside and I was like tending to it. And it was, it was very hurt. And, and then I turn and look outside and my, my eight year old daughter and my 16 year old son are outside in the yard, just kind of like walking around. I'm like very like mad at them. Like, Hey, don't you know, there are mountain lions around that are attacking, you know, in my dream. Right. Uh -huh. And so I was just like, my heart was going and my adrenaline was up and everything. And, and that's how I woke up. So I woke up like in this heightened state. <laughs> Do you sleep with like a Apple Watch or Fitbit? No, I don't. But I bet it would have. Oh, that'd be it would have really gone up. That would have been really interesting. So I wake up. And I'm like, oh, it's just a dream. Okay, whew. And I go outside in into the living room, and I'm getting my like my my girls, including the eight year old, ready. And then my eight year old just casually mentions, "Dad, there was a coyote in our yard." Uh, when I woke up, so I went outside and I, and I shoot it away. Mm. Oh, I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? Like you went outside and she's like, yeah, yeah. It ran away as soon as I opened the door. <laughs> I was like, okay. Wow. She is fearless. And your dream was uh, pretty, you know, spot on. I know it was a coyote, not a, not a mountain lion, but yeah, I mean, it was a wild animal <laughs> and my, uh, my fearless daughter, uh, just no big deal. Yeah. I shoot it away. <laughs> Wow. Uh, so um, I'm keeping a very close eye as I look out the window here as we're recording this podcast, looking for signs of wildlife, I guess. <laughs> Speaking of large cats, though, uh, Mazen, you were saying that Tiger King is coming back like season two. Yeah. Netflix tweeted about two hours ago that season two will be back later this year. So hopefully we get to find out what happened to Carol Baskin's husband. <laughs> See, now I... I didn't even watch season one, but I, I even know like a lot of like who she is and that she supposedly maybe killed her husband and uh, all this stuff. So is it a good show? It is. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it is. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it shouldn't be. But <laughs> I mean, I, I actually went pretty long without knowing that it was real until I started hearing more and more about it in the news. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Because uh, it's just that ridiculous. So. <laughs> <laughs> the characters feel like like caricatures yeah yeah definitely um but i am curious if they're going to continue like in present day or if it's going to be more past tense like it was before mm. yeah i wish they released a trailer it was just a picture of ooh, i forget his name the main character um tiger king himself mm -hmm. um, king. in jail speaking so i can okay. only assume that yes it's present day and probably picked up where left off because I feel like I've seen them in the news a lot recent um, since the show came out. Mm -hmm. So who knows? There might have been. There's probably a lot of content to cover there. Wow. Yeah. Very wild. I I don't know. Like uh, it, it is kind of interesting to me to watch, but then at the same time, I'm like I don't know. Like it, there's something that is that is uh, that I'm resisting. I'm resisting watching it for mm -hmm. just because it feels like it's it's almost too tailored to like capture your interest. You know. I was the same way. Same I'm, here. My wife and I were like, no, this, this can be a good show. After <laughs> like 10 minutes into episode one, we were like, we wanted to watch the whole thing. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely one of those shows where it was released, I guess with low, who knows what the expectation was, but I just captivated and blew yeah. up. Well, maybe I'll have to watch it with, uh, I don't know if my eight year old, uh, would, would like <laughs> <laughs> probably not a show for her. Anyway, uh, I am Jamin Holmgren, your host, friendly CTO, and uh, apparently quite frightened of wildlife, host of this podcast, 
which will be about technology at some point here, uh, CTO of Infinite Red, and I am joined by my deluxe co-hosts, John Major and Mazen. I don't know if you've upgraded or something, but you're now deluxe. Uh, John Major Condon is a senior software engineer here at Infinite Red. He lives in Janesville, Wisconsin. He's also the editor-in-chief of the React Native newsletter. What's up, John Major? Oh, not too much. Hearing the word deluxe, though, makes me think of a cheeseburger. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, yesterday, uh, I channeled my inner Roy Kent and I coached kids soccer. Um, no, oh, that's cool. no F bombs were dropped, but yeah. it was fun. That's so you awesome. Did well, it coach soccer? No, I did coach soccer, mm-hmm. but, <laughs> but yes, not, not with that, uh, bravado. <laughs> so, uh, I apparently am the only host here who's not a soccer coach. Uh, the other host here is Mazen Chami. He is a soccer coach, former pro soccer player, and a current senior React Native engineer here at Infinite Red. What's going on, Mazen? Not much. Uh, it's getting colder out here in yeah. Durham. Today's supposed to be actually one of our last nice days of the year, so uh, I'm actually going to go swimming at some point today, and then uh, then probably have to shut down the pool next week. No. <laughs> yeah, that's always a little sad. This episode is sponsored by Infinite Red. Infinite Red is a premier React Native design and development agency located fully remote in the U.S. and Canada. If you're looking for React Native expertise in your next React Native project, hit us up. You can learn more on our website, infinite.red slash React Native. And don't forget to mention that you heard about us through the React Native radio podcast. And also imagine working with this awesome team. If you are a senior React Native engineer who coaches kids soccer and is located in the u.s and canada uh, apparently that's now a requirement right coaching kids soccer i yeah. guess yeah yeah let's uh, make it that way yeah L- let's make it that way yeah. okay uh <laughs> go to careers.infinite.red we may or may not have a question about that on the form let's get into the topic for today the topic is react native ios native components and first off i'd re- recommend that if you the listener haven't listened to React Native Radio 214, which is the Android version of this, go do that because there's a lot of uh, sort of like overlapping concepts that we're not going to rehash on this episode. You should listen to the Android one first and then come back and listen to this. It's basically a dependency of this episode. If you don't, and then you're like, hey, you didn't talk about this. Well, that's because it was in the previous episode. And you can certainly get a lot out of this episode without that. But like, that's, that's just my recommendation. Go listen to 214 first. It will also hopefully be a shorter episode, uh, because we are only talking about the iOS specific concepts here. So, uh, hopefully it'll be shorter if we can get me to shut up anyway. I'll try. (laughs) It's a, it's a, it's a difficult job, but somebody's got to do it. I see. I already like. I, I. Yeah. I'm. It's. It's just impossible. I can't even get me to shut up. All right. So let's let's start off uh, talking about. I guess like when you when you go to write an iOS native component, you're writing it in either Objective C or Swift. So those are the two languages. Objective C has been around forever. I want to say it was invented in like 1984 or something like that. I mean, this is this is basically Objective C is basically a layer. It's a superset of C, very much like C++ was, is, uh, but Objective-C was like a different take on that. And it was based on Smalltalk, which is another language out there, a very old language. And Objective-C was primarily kind of brought in through Next, uh, when Steve Jobs went to Next and like built the Next Step operating system, it was brought in. In fact, we still see remnants of that when you see things like ns string ns stands for next step mm. so that is uh, kind of a remnant from back in the you know early 90s so objective c has been around a very long time and and i think 2016 or 2015 apple came out with swift and that was a huge deal so we can now work with swift which is very much like kotlin in fact they were developed at pretty much the same time and ended up with a very similar syntax. They're actually based on the same languages. It's kind of eerie how close they are. It almost feels like maybe the two companies should have gotten together and said, hey, let's find a common language. (laughs) You know, let's just make the same. I don't know. That That wouldn't happen. Yeah, exactly. Like Google and Apple aren't going to get together and do that. So uh, Mazen, you've, uh, you've worked on kind of setting up Swift on on the iOS side. How, how was your kind of experience around that? Definitely much easier than converting java to kotlin um this had less steps mm. it was quicker and dare i say easier to read in comparison to objective c mm. so 
I do remember doing some Objective-C work in the past and just finding it a very high burden to to read the files and kind of follow the file structure because if you know if if you're familiar with Objective-C, you have the .h and mm-hmm. the .m files. Yep, um, the header file and the implementation file. Yeah, yeah and, and those files um, are essentially now gone for a .swift file, which mm-hmm. makes it easier to read. Now, you do have the multi-layer ones where you have like a view manager and then your view .swift files. So yeah. it was a, definitely a much easier conversion, easier to read. I felt like Swift as a language is also very user-friendly in in its completion. So kind of going back to the last episode, um, Xcode does a good job of giving you documentation and autofill for, mm-hmm. for your files. Yeah, that's kind of been my experience as well. Um, and would you say, you know, Swift is a better language than Objective-C then overall? Overall, yes. I haven't done you know much research into digging as far as performance goes right. into the two. But as far as user experience and developer experience at the end of the day, yes, I would say Swift is a better language. And I know if I'm not mistaken, Apple has a lot of documentation and books. Mm-hmm. I think that it come auto auto like installed on your iOS device and your mm-hmm. MacBook in like the books app yeah. already. So kind of Apple already gives all the resources that you need to to learn the language, which is great. When I was learning Objective C in 2011, 2010, 2011, actually, yeah, I think it was in that range. I was reading on iBook, uh, you know, their programming, their Cocoa Touch guide, and then also, which is like all the APIs. And then also the Objective C guide, and so that was uh, that was very handy back then. And it sounds like they're continuing the tradition with Swift now. Yeah, definitely. But which is better for React Native? So this is kind of a more focused question for this. Yeah, React Native comes already with Objective C. So similar to Android, you're going to have to go in and do the legwork yourself to convert everything over. So I mentioned it a little bit earlier, you'd get rid of your H file and M files, the main ones. When I say by main, they're usually like rn or rcte prefix something after that so you'd still have to go through that legwork now it's much less than android android was a lot of different steps this one's much easier you're just getting rid of those you do need if i'm not mistaken one dot h file so one header file that does pretty much like you're bridging from mm-hmm. yeah swift to uh, react native or javascript in this case so much easier you know you're talking about one file whether that's a text view image view like you did in um, React Native Live, Jamin. So definitely not as high as a burden to get there. Now, is it worth it in the long run? If you are familiar with Swift, absolutely. Now, under the hood, it still is Objective-C. So you are essentially writing in Swift, but you are converting it over to Objective-C on compile time. I believe that's what what happens. So you can still link Objective-C libraries and Objective-C code. So is it worth it? At the end of the day, you're not really converting the project 100% to Swift. But if mm-hmm. you feel like writing in Swift would be easier, then I I think it's not as a high burden as it would be to convert to Kotlin, for sure. From what I understand, the core team inside Facebook has no real plans to convert the React Native code base on the iOS side over to Swift. So that's going to always play a part here. I mean, you know, never say never, but that's sort of where we are right now. And so... Yeah, I mean, I guess that's that's always a thing is like, you know, is it worth it to kind of go outside of what what the the framework itself is using? Maybe if you're writing a lot of it, then it maybe makes sense to kind of move to Swift. But yeah, another idea that I had was maybe we could move, uh, make Ignite support it by default. So if you spin up a brand new Ignite app, you know, not using Expo, but like using the, the, the bare workflow, then at that point, you know, maybe if it's already set up for you, then uh, that would make it much easier, you know, like Kotlin's already set up and Swift's already set up and then you can just drop in and start writing. I also think if, you know, we're always looking at Stack Overflow and different blog posts and tutorials to to give us hints when we're stuck. I don't, I haven't seen any Swift ones out there. Um, So if you're digging into native code to do, whether it's an image view or even something a little more robust into like a module, I doubt you will find a Swift version to kind of give you a tutorial and help you on it. You will most definitely find an Objective-C one out there. All right. So I'm hearing that uh, iOS is easier than Android when it comes to writing in Swift versus Kotlin. Does the same exist then with uh, Objective-C versus Java? So yeah, to answer your question, John Major, de- definitely easier and less work to write an OA- iOS component than it would be in Android. Um, I see here, Jamin has some notes when he did a React Native Live, iOS had 116 lines while Android had 183 lines change. So yeah. 
just under a hundred lines difference. So essentially much less. And you are going, like we mentioned earlier, a little better of a developer experience in developing in Swift. Right. Yeah, that was definitely my case. And the, the lines of code is a little bit squirrely because you know like you can you can kind of manipulate that by Mm -hmm. making very long lines of code rather than entering down and you know making them look nice but but i think it matches with with my experience overall uh was you know that just probably writing a little less code i didn't find it to be like significantly different in terms of making functionality work it was more around the tooling Mm -hmm. that i had problems making sure everything like it just it just took so much longer and uh, to get everything compiling and, and working. But once I had it working, then the actual, like like adding an animation was equally easy on both of them. I wanted to make a little flip animation. It literally is just go look it up, find something on Stack Overflow, drop it in, modify it a little bit, and it worked right out of the, the gate for both iOS and Android. I do know Xcode and iOS are working on like a live reload capability. I'm not very familiar with that. So I remember when I did some, I did a, what was that? I did a text view. So just something simple that says, welcome, Mm -hmm. your insert name prop that's coming in from JavaScript. If I made a change, like I'd say I want to change the welcome to hello, I'd have to, you know, kill my app, recompile and reinstall, like rebuild, and then re, like I said, reinstalls at that point also. And that took a very long time just to change a little bit of text. So I think we're spoiled in our React Native experience of that live reload essentially happening as soon as you click that save. Now, Xcode and iOS does have live reload. I'm not familiar with it. So that, that might be something that could, that, you know, that's out there to improve the performance. Not familiar with it. Yeah, I think that's something we're used to with React Native and of course web having that live reload, you know, kind of smooth experience. And then when mm-hmm. you have to like recompile every time when you make a, a native change that can get kind of annoying, like, ah, why do I have to do this? You know, why do I have to wait so long? So impatient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, React Native is uh, pretty nice in that sense with the uh, React Native live reload. Mm-hmm. So then what's what's involved with all this? Uh, as a person who wants to come in, uh, build an iOS, you know, native component, what's involved? So obviously you're working with Xcode to start with. Uh, Xcode is the IDE by Apple and it's it's gigantic. It's many gigabytes of a download. And then when you load it up, there's just so much to it. It's also uh, like I had, it was kind of funny because like I, I had trouble finding the word wrap uh, like setting oh, in yeah. <laughs> when I was doing React Native Live. And then John Major messages me afterward. He's like, yeah, it's, it's just right over here. And he points to a section of the screen, like in his screenshot that I didn't even look at, but it was just a checkbox. And uh, what'd you call it, John Major? Like, where's Waldo or yep, something? where's Waldo? Good game of where's Waldo. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so it can be a little daunting. Uh, the, the interface is just like, there's so much going on. But I will tell you, there is an amazing talk. And I mean, amazing. This is something that I'm like... Basically, I don't require that my developers do things very often, but this is basically re- as close to required viewing as, as possible. I will tell you, I did watch this. Yeah. How, what'd you think of it? I thought it was great. Uh, Helm... I should probably mention what it is before I ask sure, you that yeah. question. Let, me, right let me say that. Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so Orda Thoreau, who was on the program, actually, uh, he was in episode 187. Uh, he's on the TypeScript team now, but he gave a talk at React Native EU 2019 a conference that I was at as well and gave a talk at and he uh, we'll link to it in the show notes but he gave a talk about Xcode and the tooling so yeah uh, you watched it John Major what'd you think yeah I thought it was great um this this person has a lot of experience in a lot of different places I believe he is still or was a maintainer of Cocoa Pods Mm -hmm. but yeah so he talked a lot about Xcode uh, tooling and I did not know half of what he was talking about before watching it. There's so much Xcode can do for you. Uh, and I can't really begin to list all of it. it. There's just a lot that it can do for you. Yeah, it's amazing. I guess that makes sense. Now it makes more sense why it's such a big file and takes you a day to download. Yeah, 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 totally. Real. Yeah, it's it's a huge, I mean, obviously all Apple, I mean, my assumption, I think, is that like Apple works on their own products in Xcode. So they they make it as good as they can. So definitely go watch that talk and we'll link to it in the show notes. But then obviously you're also writing Swift or Objective-C code. And then the the docs for setting up the iOS native components um, in React Native are pretty poor. Not as bad as the Android ones. And I have talked to Rachel Neighbors about uh, improving those and maybe helping improve those. But uh, they, they were a little difficult to 
to kind of get through just because there's a lot of kind of missing context and even a few wrong things. But uh, you can get through. It didn't take me near as long to get set up on that. You're also potentially using Cocoa Pods or even integrating and making your own Cocoa Pod. So there are, you know, pieces along with that. You can use those tools that we mentioned in the last one, uh, in the last episode, to spin up, uh, you know, third-party components or... uh, like external components that have native components. It's it's a little bit, I think, more simple in terms of tooling than Android. But yeah, it, you still have you still have some like there's a there's a learning curve for sure. So, Jamin, yeah, can you share code between iOS and Android components? Yeah, so that's a great question. You can. So you generally would not share code native code. Like the native part will be totally kind of isolated from each other. You're going to have some code in the iOS folder. You're going to have some fo- code in the Android folder. And the two are not going to talk to each other. There's not going to be any requirements between the two. Maybe someone's done that, but highly unlikely. Where you are going to share code is on the JavaScript side. And really, the entry point for both of them is a function called require native component. So require native component will bring in your your view as a React native view. And then from there, you can kind of like build like a, a wrapper around it if you want. You can just pass it directly back to, you know, whatever's including it and just use it. Or you can build a wrapper around it, which is usually usually recommended. So you can add some TypeScript types so you can, you know, kind of like uh, maybe massage the data or, or whatever before you pass it through. And then the responsibility at that point is to make sure that your iOS and your Android APIs are the same. Name the properties the same. Name the the events the same or the event handlers the same. So as long as those things are the same, then you can kind of coordinate so that when you require it from that file, you know, the one that is importing require native component, you'll actually be able to just use one component then in your JavaScript. And it will automatically, whatever platform you're in, run the iOS code or run the Android code. So really the sharing part is is happening in JavaScript after you pull it in. I have a question for you. Um, so you've done quite a bit now with uh, Native. Is there anything today with React Native that stands out that's missing that you would use this experience to, say, facilitate building a component for? So I really wish that we didn't have to go through all of the hoops. In fact, I wish that we could just drop our like like drop a Swift file into our app folder and have it compile and include it just like you would normally. Mm-hmm. Like if there was some way to do that, that would be amazing. Uh, where your your Swift file, and I'm saying Swift, not Objective-C, but you have a Swift file, and it'd be fine with Objective-C too, but like drop a Swift file into your app folder anywhere you want. It could be co-located with your JavaScript, require it, and it compiles it and links it and does all the fancy stuff itself so that you don't have to do that anymore. It's just built right in. And that would be amazing. And you could have your Kotlin file right next to your Swift file and they just work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That might be a little bit pie in the sky, but that would be amazing. That would be so cool. Right. Yeah. When when I was watching the video from Orda, he actually mentioned how, I'm trying to remember what company, I want to say it was Artsy um, that he worked at, but someone had included a Swift uh, file and that Mm -hmm. basically threw off a lot of things in terms of needing to create another build pipeline for uh, for, uh, Swift. But yeah, I, I he was totally a fan agree. of just using Objective C. Yeah, yeah. So that would be one thing. Obviously, the new architecture is gonna, I think, change some things when we move into it. But I haven't done a deep dive into that yet. We will be when the new architecture is kind of fully out and we have some information about it. This podcast, as well as React Native Live on Twitch, which is my new streaming uh, series on Twitch, both of those are going to be doing a lot of kind of investigation into the new architecture and education on that. So make sure you subscribe. <laughs> And follow me on Twitch uh, because that's where you're going to be getting a lot of a lot of good data. But yeah, I mean that's uh, that's I can I th- I think those are kind of the two big things for me. I really wish it was easier to get started with native code and having it just be able to drop in would be amazing. Anything to improve the developer experience, I think, yeah. helps a lot. And kind of going back to live reload. Yeah, totally. So w- where's a good place that we could learn more information about? our iOS native components? I usually would say, again, like I said last time, I usually would say the docs, but those have some, there's some value there for sure. And there's some interesting things there. Probably going to get more if you Google around. You can certainly watch my React Native live broadcast. It was about a, I think about an hour and a half long, and you're going to learn a ton from that. And we'll link to that in the the show notes where, where I actually implement a an iOS component, which matches the Android one that I did before in native code. 
I even like explain how Objective C works a little bit. So you're going to get a little Objective C knowledge when you when you uh, watch that. It works much different than JavaScript with its dot notation. I was watching it you, <laughs> and that was like one of the things that was really bothering me. I really wish yeah. that you could do the dot notation. Well, I guess I guess you could, but it was just not. You can. Yeah. Yeah. For some for some calls, like some method calls, you can, especially if they don't have the infix op or the infix um uh arguments mm -hmm. where like uh objective c like small talk will kind of intersperse into its method name arguments <laughs> inside the method name so you know application and then inside of like so it's the, the method name would be application did finish launching with options right it's a long name but it goes application and then the variable application did finish launching with options and then options is at the end. So you get application and options as two arguments, but it's application is inside the method name. It's like infix there. So uh, that is a little harder to use dot notation on. And that's why they use the square brackets to kind of surround everything and say, this is a method call. But if you just had like uiview.new, you could do that and it'll work um, because, you know, it's just a single name for that. And maybe there's ways to do that otherwise, but it's not idiomatic. Most Objective-C developers would really kind of be like, what are you doing if you don't use square brackets mm -hmm. <laughs> to do a method call? It is more common for, for property. And I highly recommend that React Native Live episode. Um, that one's a really good one. Thanks. Yeah. I, I felt good about that. It, it seemed like it really um, made a, uh, it was, it was, I was able to kind of like get through it in a way that was kind of cohesive and tight. That's not always the case. Sometimes I'll struggle for three hours, but you know, I always, I always enjoy doing it. The other thing is we do have a React Native versus Native blog by Gant Laborde and Mazin has been helping with a part two for that. Yeah. The current one that's out there is Java and Objective-C creating a, what I'll call a welcome web manager. Oh, sorry, a welcome view manager. And then the current, the part two that Gant and I are working on is the same thing, but then just converting it to Kotlin and Swift. Uh, and there will be a repo that can kind of show you the work that was done. Stay tuned on Twitter for that. I'm sure we're going to announce it on there once the blog's ready. Yeah, and and to be honest, I I wish I had gone through Gantt's blog post instead of struggling with the official documents when I did my React Native Live because it, you know this it's Gantt. It's like it's going to have a lot of cool stuff. So yeah, it's uh, it's a great blog post, and I'm glad that you're working on that that follow up because I think that was written in what 2018 or something. So that one is starting to get a little dated. Yeah. All right. Nice and tight uh, episode. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up now. Uh, where can people find you online, John Major? Uh, at John Major C. And Mazin? At Mazin Chami. You can find me at Jamin Holmgren and our React Native Radio Twitter, which please do go follow it. I appreciate it when people do. At React Native RDIO. As always, thanks to our producer and editor, Todd Wirth, our assistant editor and episode release coordinator, Jed Bartoski our social media coordinator, Missy Warren, and our designer, Justin Husky. Thanks to our sponsor, Infinite Red. Check us out, infinite.red slash React Native. Special thanks to all of you for listening today. Hopefully this episode was helpful. Uh, make sure to subscribe. Send this over to someone who may be interested in learning more about iOS native programming in the context of React Native. Reminder that Infinite Red is hiring React Native engineers. If you're senior React senior level react native engineer located in the u.s or canada go to careers.infinite.red see you all next time <laughs> <laughs>